Wow. AI is moving so fast these days. It's uh, almost impossible to keep up. It really is. Every day there's something new. Just in the past couple of weeks, we've seen AI designing computer chips. Right. Wild. And AR glasses from like a bunch of different companies. Seems like the future is arriving all at once. It does, doesn't it? Right. But um, it's not all hype. There are some really groundbreaking things happening. That's why we're doing this deep dive. We've got research, articles, you name it. Trying to cut through the noise and see what's really going to change things. Exactly. And uh, what it all means for, you know, everyone. One thing that's really striking is how AI is impacting both hardware and software at the same time. True. So it's not just about smarter programs. It's the actual, like, physical stuff they run on. Precisely. And that's evolving crazy fast. Like this thing with Google's DeepMind, for example. Right, Alpha Chip. Sounds like something out of a movie. AI that makes computer chips, it's mind-blowing. I know. And not just any chips. These are the TPUs, the tensor processing units. Those are the ones that power Google's AI systems, right? Yes. So we're talking about AI designing the very heart of AI infrastructure. Whoa, that's, that's getting pretty meta. But why is this such a big deal? Well, for one, it's incredibly fast. Like a fraction of the time it takes humans. Okay, so speed is one thing, but there's got to be more to it than that, right? Right. It's also about this feedback loop. AI designs a chip. That chip allows for even faster and more powerful AI. And then that AI can design even better chips. Exactly. It's Moore's law on fast forward, yeah. and it could completely shake up the whole semiconductor industry. It's like we're seeing this uh, exponential leap happening right before our eyes. And it's not just about you know, faster phones or whatever. No, this impacts everything. Medicine, research, even space exploration. Okay, so speaking of seeing the future, AR, augmented reality, I have to admit, I was uh, skeptical of those early headsets. Yeah, they were pretty clunky, weren't they? But now with these AR glasses from Snap and Meta, things are getting really interesting. Definitely. And what we're seeing now is the true convergence of AI and AR. These aren't just displays strapped to your face. No more Terminator vision, huh? <laughs> right. These glasses are more like AI assistants you wear, constantly analyzing everything around you. So they understand what I'm seeing and actually, like, interact with it. Okay, now I'm interested. Tell me more about Snap's glasses. Well, their new spectacles are all about being lightweight, comfy, and fitting into your everyday life. So more subtle, not as uh, obvious as those old headsets. Right. And they run on a new Snap operating system mm -hmm. with a big focus on what they call multimodal AI. Multimodal AI, huh? This sounds fancy. What does that even mean? Basically, it means these glasses don't just process what you're seeing. Okay. They combine that visual input from the cameras with your voice commands. Makes sense. And potentially even data from your other devices. It's all about making the experience more natural and intuitive. Interesting. So it's not just seeing information. It's interacting with your environment in a whole new way. Exactly. But what about Meta? They've been quiet on the AR front, haven't they? You'd think so. But actually, they've been developing their own AR glasses, Project Orion, for almost a decade. Wow, really? A decade? They've been holding out on us. It seems like their focus is on creating a more immersive experience with a wider field of view. So you really feel like you're in it then. That's the idea. They're also working on advanced hand tracking and seamless integration with their voice assistant. Ah, so while Snap is going for the sleek, everyday companion. Meta is aiming for a more uh, immersive, feature-rich experience. Two different approaches to the same goal, making AR like a normal part of our lives. And it'll be fascinating to see which one people prefer. I'm excited to find out. It's pretty wild to think about, right? AI designing chips and AR glasses that feel like like they're straight out of the future. It really is amazing how quickly things are progressing. But amidst all this uh all this excitement, I keep thinking about ChatGPT. Oh yes. It seems like just yesterday everyone was like obsessed with writing the perfect prompt. It does feel like a while ago now, doesn't it? Yeah. But have ChatGPT and OpenAI been keeping up with all this? Oh, absolutely. Mm. They've actually made some uh, some really significant moves lately. Things that could change how we how we interact with AI. Okay. You got to you gotta tell me more. What's got you so, so excited? Well, for one, they've rolled out this advanced voice mode. Voice mode. So ChatGPT can talk now. Basically. Mm. It can understand and respond to voice commands. Okay. But there's more to it than that. Mm. It can actually remember past conversations. No way. Yep. And even, like, inflections in your voice. Hold on. So it's not just, like, 
asking it to play a song or set a timer. Yep. It can actually like hold a real conversation, remember what we talked about before, yeah. and even pick up on, on how I'm saying things. Precisely. The goal is to make it feel much more natural and personalized. Wow, that that is a game changer. And it's not just the voice stuff, right? They also announced that uh, Canvas thing. That's right. Canvas is this collaborative interface, mm -hmm. lets you work with ChatGPT in a more visual way. So instead of just like, a chat window, it's more more hands-on. Exactly. Imagine a digital whiteboard where you're like brainstorming ideas with chat GPT, okay. co-writing code, even working on creative projects together, like uh, writing a story or designing a website. Wow. So it's like, it's like having an AI brainstorming partner. Exactly. And you can actually see the output changing in real time as you work. So I can make suggestions, get feedback, all that. Exactly. And OpenAI is putting a lot of resources into developing Canvas. Makes sense. They got all that funding recently, right? Yep. Billions. And a big chunk of that is going towards making Canvas even better. It's not hard to see why. I mean, this could totally change how we approach, like, creative work, research. Oh, absolutely. Wow. Even education. Mm -hmm. And while some people might worry about AI, you know, replacing human creativity. Right, right. I think Canvas is a perfect example of how AI can actually enhance our own abilities. So it's a tool, not a replacement, right? Yeah, exactly. And speaking of tools, we should probably talk about Meta's new movie, Gen. Oh, right. Meta. For all their metaverse stuff, they haven't forgotten about video, have they? It seems not. Movie Gen is this AI-powered tool. lets you create short video clips just by, like, typing in what you want. Wait, really? How does that even work? It's surprisingly simple. You just give it a text prompt. Like what? Give me an example. Okay, let's say you want a video of a, I don't know, a dog chasing a Frisbee on the beach. You just type that in, and MovieGen will generate a clip for you. Wow, so I don't need any, like, video editing skills or anything. Nope. It's designed to be super user-friendly, and the results are, uh, well, they're pretty impressive, especially for something so easy to use. It sounds like it. So no more spending hours learning complicated software or hiring expensive freelancers. That's the idea. It's yeah. all about democratizing video creation, putting these powerful tools in the hands of everyday users. I like that idea. But even if this stuff is easy to use, it's still, you know, it's a lot to wrap your head around. It really is. The pace of progress can be um, overwhelming at times. Totally. It feels like the future is like unfolding at warp speed and we're all just trying to hold on i know the feeling yeah but instead of just focusing on the technology itself i think it's important to step back and and ask ourselves where do humans fit into all of this that's a great question i mean if ai can do all this stuff design ships write scripts make videos what does that mean for us for the future of you know work and creativity it's the million dollar question isn't it It really is it's almost like existential you know if ai can do all this stuff where do we